Segment two, Golden Black Live, and always gracious with his time is Mike Babinski with us. We try not to abuse it, but it's always in, 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 informative and interesting. Mike, of course, Purdue's athletic director, and you know he's got things going on just about every day, uh, I would say, in your world. But Mike, uh, let's talk about uh, first, last night, Purdue men's basketball, an impressive performance up in Minneapolis, and uh, you've seen a lot of basketball in your life, been the chair of the NCAA commit- men's basketball committee. This is a very interesting Purdue men's basketball team and and uh, a storyline that continues to grow. It is. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the consensus nationally is that we're just a really enjoyable team to watch play because yeah. we do, you know, we come at you in so many different ways. You know, Zach, obviously, and, and rightfully so, gets lots of attention uh, because he's a tremendous player and he's a you know physically unique uh, person and, and and has an impact on the game. Whether we're going to him or not, the other team's always worried about Zach, and that's uh, that's to our advantage. But I think the the really interesting thing this year is how we've proven that we can beat you different ways. You know, we can score lots of points, we can win games where defense and, and our ability to really defend at a high level, uh, which has reemerged as a strength of ours, um, is, is a way that we can win a game. You know, last night we suffocated Minnesota. You know Minnesota early on, and I think they just they just lost their will to compete after a while, yeah. and you know that was all she wrote. Um, yeah, but you know, but Braden last night, you know, just you know after having just an okay game, honestly, at Michigan State, where he really didn't look quite like the same guy he was uh, last night. Boy, he was every bit of that guy, and if he really had looked for, I mean, he could have scored thirty, I think, if he just really went after it. So it, uh, I, I think the the fact that we've got so many different weapons, and you know, and I don't think it's any secret to, to those that watch. You know, we probably have a couple guys right now that are struggling a little bit. They're not playing at their at their at their very best. Uh, if you know, if we can just get everybody back to uh, sort of their their baseline level of play, we become a, a really really hard out. And uh, I think it's just it's just been really enjoyable to watch. And you know, eight, hard, hard to argue with eighteen and one. Last time I checked, that's that's pretty darn good. You know, by by any, anybody's estimation, uh, with one loss by a point, uh, you know, uh, unbelievable great start so far. You are, you are the athletic director that has presided over the greatest start in Purdue basketball history. So oh, and I know you you're there taking it. all the credit I, for it. <laughs> the fact that I have zero to do with it, you know, I'll, t- I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, you look at at, at in, in with all your student athletes and trying to get that competitive edge and get people that want to compete. And we'll talk about Ryan Walters and what he's going to try to attract as well. But Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Mason Gillis, on down the line, you've got guys that just appear uh, that Matt Painter does that just want to be, you know, want to be competitive and they want to be in the arena. That's a unique, unique, unique trait. It, it is, you know, and I think anybody in athletics always wants to win. Everybody, everybody wants to win. But I think when you find people, whether it be coaches or or student athletes that that hate to lose and yeah. just will do anything possible to avoid that sick feeling of losing, <laughs> then you've got something re- really special. And I, I think in, in, in some of those folks, you know, the, the, the additions to our team this year, particularly Braden and Fletcher, those guys are wired to win and, and, and just, and, and more wired to not lose, to do anything possible to not lose. And I think that's, that has been evident in, in how they performed in really key moments here uh, so far this year. You know, it's not your day job to have to sit on the committee and pick, pick the uh, or help select this uh, 68 team field but you certainly have a unique perspective look at the landscape this year you know from the big 10 on down uh there's going to be multiple teams like how many who knows but it's really a competitive year uh from top to bottom it's going to be maybe a hard maybe a hard job for that it's always a hard job for the selection committee but maybe extra hard this year what yeah I, I i do think it's it is you know and i probably this probably gets said more often than than not, but I think it's it is really clear that you know there are no sort of monolithic unbeatables out there this year. There's not like a team that's like oh my god they're they're head and shoulders above everybody else. I, you know I I don't think there's any question that when we're playing at 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 our you know good to high level where we are without a doubt as good as anybody in the country. Uh, we we should have we should have no fear. Of taking anybody on because I think we've proven uh, that we can we can play at that level. There are there other really good teams. Yeah, Kansas is really good. Alabama is really good. Houston's really good. Uh, but but we can we can play with all those folks. And there are there are more. There's a, that list goes on and on. 
Um, but I, but I really, I do think it's a, it's an opportunity that uh, the team that's playing the best here in, in, in March uh, has, has a real chance to, to, to do something special. Well, you have a number of initiatives and plates in the air on a daily basis. But one of the things that uh, Ryan Walters, uh, you made in a very, very, every football coach that you hire is an extremely important one. Yeah. Talk about just his month plus on the job. He's he's had to be a very, very busy young. And I say young because he is. He's going to be 37 here uh, this weekend. But this is a guy that's uh, hit the ground running. Talk about what you've seen from him here in, the, in this uh, first month. You know, I've been, been incredibly pleased and impressed with the way Ryan has taken this job on uh, from, from the very first day. Uh, he's, you know, when as we went through the process, one of the things that struck me and, and, and the, the, the parallel that I'll draw uh, in, in my own mind, in my own experience, is, is when I hired Thad Mata from Butler way back in the day when I was over at mm-hmm. Xavier. He was, a, he was a young man at that point. He was in his 30s. Uh, but he had a maturity way beyond his chronological age, and and that's the one of the one of the amongst the many characteristics that I that I sensed in Ryan was that same thing where he is he has been consciously preparing for this opportunity for a, a whole bunch of years, and and is and is you know again there, there will certainly be growing pains when you're a head coach for the first time, uh, particularly at this level, but but just his 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 thoughtfulness. His preparation, his ability to have a plan and a strategy, uh, it has been really impressive. You know, he he's an incredibly intelligent and quick study. I mean, he reads the room, he reads the situation uh, very very quickly, and, and sort of has a natural instinct of what's the right what's the right move, what's the right thing to do, what's the right thing to say at this point in time, um, and 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 then you know to, to extend that. You know his interactions with our team early on, and now now that we're in this semester and where it's truly his, you know, his team uh, have been really really positive and productive, and I think our guys feel uh, that renewed sort of energy and, and structure and, and sense of accountability and an expectation that uh, that that everything we had hoped for from that perspective, and and then the, the fellows that he's the, the team that he's assembling in terms of coaching staff and and support staff, uh, just you know, really high quality, really great people, uh, great energy, uh, just a, you know, a great sense of, of of wanting to come here and accomplish something very special. Um, and that goes you know not just from the coaching staff but into the strength and conditioning staff, which again is the is the first really the first impact and, and connection that our current team has is with with the new strength staff right. and. Kiara Small and, and and the team that he's brought with him, uh, I think, have made an you know an, an instant impact on our players. Again, Don Marino, we we had a really good strength coach, but everybody comes with their own sort of their own vibe and their own approach. And I think th- this has been really sort of a you know a, a renewed sense of of commitment and 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 the work that's going to get done and and a new training philosophy, which you know every everybody has their own version of that. Uh, but I think there's that our guys have really responded to the initial uh, you know sort of approach that that first week of January uh, was uh, when school started. Uh, the first week of school in January, January yeah. 9th, that week was a discretionary week. You know where there's no required activity. Well, the weight room was full every day, and and you know just on electively, our guys were in there. All day, every day. Once they had a chance to be exposed to Kiero and and his team, so they they wanted to get off to a great start. They wanted to get acclimated to the training regimen and the approach. So it's a, it's a, it was a really good signal, and and I think this week of of really structured workouts that we've begun have has been more of the same. So we're off to a a really really good start in lots of ways. As we joked offline, we, I want in your memoirs when it, when you choose to write them, I want to know about the whole process and how you got yeah. to this to Ryan. Uh, you got to him and that's the important thing, but what in the interview process, was there a magic mm-hmm. moment or what, you know, when you, when you talk to a guy that's not been a head coach, uh, yes. he's 36 years old. Um, what are some of those benchmarks or key, key indicators that boy, you've got the right guy was and was there that moment in that interview with Ryan? Sure. Um, so I'll, you know, as we, as we went through Ryan on our, our list of folks, we wanted to, to know more about from the very beginning, we had, we had you know, a dozen people, whatever, whatever the number was, yeah. um, you know, some, some 
made it through uh and, and had we had more further conversation with uh, remote you know by by zoom which is really a one of the great uses of, of this tool is to, yeah. to do those kind of things uh and then some eliminated along the way but you know for their own purposes or other reasons but it, it, that's the way searches go yeah but i will tell you that we had a conversation initial conversation with ryan on a friday night and i, I lost track of days and all that <laughs> but it was obviously december, a december friday night about eight o'clock or so um, and, and I, when we finished the hour and a half or whatever the conversation was, um, I, I got up and walked down to Tiffany Grimes office and says, you know, I, and I, I'll euphemistically, you know, I used a colorful term to say, you know, man, I really, I really like, I really liked what I heard there. I mean, I really was impressed by, you know, his intelligence, his, his plan, his strategy, his, his understanding of our situation and, and how he would, how we would move that forward. And I think, you know, he's, uh, he's someone that we need to, you know, be, we're going to be serious about as we work through this. So he made it in a really positive first impression. Um, and then, you know, was on the, on the, that next round of now in-person conversations yeah. and uh, when, when going through that one, when we walked out of those in-person meetings, you know, I, it was the three of us that were together uh, all said unanimously, that, that's the guy that that is the right person i mean it wasn't it wasn't me saying hey i'm gonna you know this is me and i'm gonna strong arm everybody into it it was unanimous and independently we all arrived at the same place that he is and looks and feels and 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 is in our opinion the very best fit for us at this point in time and again i've seen nothing to this point that would uh, convince me otherwise the three of you was that you and Tiffany and and Mike Berghoff who were who were the who yes were the, yeah I mean, yeah those those were the three that did the the in person conversation yes yeah yeah when you look at that and 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 again uh, a guy that you don't know for sure that he he can uh, because he hasn't done it yet but you have every indicators and you interviewed hundreds if not thousands of folks in your in your professional life. What is that little thing that says, you know, I, I know he can convert to this and what to, what does that, is it confidence? Is it intelligence? What is that in trait that says that gives you confidence that to, he will, he will embrace this job as the CEO of Purdue's football program? You know, it's, it's a combination, I think, Alan, of all those things. I'm not sure there's a, a single thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of, of that intelligence, of that preparation, of that understanding of our situation, uh, but also a, a humility that understanding I don't have all the answers. You know, I'm yeah. going to need a great staff with me. I'm going to, there, there are things that, that I'm going to have to learn and understand here. So he had this, to me, a very appealing combination of, of intelligence, confidence. You know, there's no doubt he's, he's, he's very, you know, he's very sure of himself, yeah. uh, but also a, a recognition that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a first time head coach. I, I know I'm going to have to have surround myself with people that can help me make the best decisions and and, and move through this in, in, in the right way. And, and here are the things that I've learned. You know, that was, that was one of the, the really unique things he, when he walked us through his, his coaching uh, experience from beginning at age 24 yeah. uh, when he became a, you know, the youngest assistant in, in, in the whole FBS, you know, he, he, he talked about each experience that he's had as a coach and what he's taken from those experiences, what he learned from either the environment or the head coach or whatever it might've been that was notable to him. And, and it was really, I, I thought it was very impressive and, and just showed somebody that has, a, you know, has had a very intentional process of trying to position himself for this opportunity this this is not this has not happened by accident this has not happened uh by you know good luck on his part he has consciously worked to put himself in this position and i think is as prepared as you can be having not done it before as anybody could be you know what well, we all had to have a first we a first opportunity to be in charge and i i got one back in 1994 yeah. um and was i perfect no but you know but i but i had an open mind i I, I tried to prepare myself very much like Ryan did, uh, but 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 learned along the way. I'm I'm different today than I was then. Thank God. Um, hmm. And Ryan will be different, you know, ten years from now than he will be this first year. But but the makings and the essence of of a, of a great head coach, I, I'm convinced, is in there. You know, in your six plus, I guess, really in your seventh year here in West Lafayette, you look at that. Conventional wisdom. Those of us that might not have known better said, "Oh, you got to have an offensive guy. You got to have a guy that throws it up and down the field." What? Maybe I'll, I'll rephrase that to say, is it important at Purdue as you look at Purdue in, in the landscape of college football to have a better or a different mousetrap? Meaning, 
maybe it's the young young defensive guy and that's your that's your niche or is it Jeff Brom who is a, a an, an offensive guru I mean is that in a key ingredient do you think to having success is to be maybe slightly different in, in your approach and maybe have that competitive advantage because you are different yeah I I don't think there's any doubt about that Alan I think that's been when we've had our our best success in football it's when we've had something that's a little not ordinary where where we just not we're not just another team to prepare for on the schedule that looks like all the other teams you know we're we're going to bring a wrinkle that's going to cause some some challenge for the, for our opponents to prepare for so as we work through this uh you know I, just by virtue of the, the the folks that we ended up talking with I would say it was overwhelmingly uh not exclusively but overwhelmingly offensive type folks yeah. were were the were the pool and that wasn't by design it was just because that's the folks that we felt were the most realistic possibilities for us it, again it wasn't exclusive but but it was probably 80 plus percent of them were mm -hmm. offensive folks and you know liked a lot of them um but at the end of the day uh you know Ryan's makeup who, who he was as a person and the fact that he you know he, I I liked that he's not just a defensive coordinator he, he's somebody that has a system and a style that is different, that is unique. And then on that side of the ball will now cause us to be somebody that offenses will have to say, gosh, darn, how are we going to deal with that? You know, we're, we're not just going to be a vanilla, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the regular old defenses that, that folks see all the time where you have, okay, we're playing cover two and whatever, whatever you know, that that's, that it's going to be a little bit different. So I like that part. And I like the fact that he is, you know, he has clearly been recognized and 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 the numbers speak for themselves as somebody that's developed something that is really, really effective. At the same time, you know, once we started to move down the path with Ryan, you know, we were very clear that, you know, offense and offensive uniqueness has been a hallmark of what we've done here at Purdue when we've had our, our best success and that we don't want to lose that. You know, we don't want to become a team that, you know, just tries to get to the next defensive possession and, you know, try to find a way to score, you know, with all due respect to our colleagues out in Iowa, you know, to try and turn them <laughs> over and kick a couple of field goals and win nine to six. And that, that's not what we're, what we're ultimately, you know, shooting for here. We just want, we want to win and I don't really care what the score is, but, but at the end of the day, you know, having the, maybe the, for, for the first time, the unique ability, the first time in a long time to have something on both sides of the ball, that's, that's problematic for our opponents. So, you know, bringing Graham Harrell in as the offensive coordinator who brings a, you know, a very high powered offensive uh, philosophy and effective offensive philosophy, couple that with the very unique defensive scheme and successful defensive scheme that Ryan's run to me gives us some, maybe the first really two way go um, from a football perspective that we've had in some time. And I, and I really, that, that is appealing to me and I'm anxious to see how that plays out. You know, he obviously, uh, and we haven't seen, I don't think, all the contract details, but he has negotiated or, or, or the plan is also to really increase the size of the assistant coach uh, pool in terms of uh, salaries. Talk about what that says about him, but also what that says about what you think you need uh, to, to to stay competitive here in West Lafayette in football. Yeah. Uh, that that was definitely part of it, and that was actually in the plan with you know with Jeff. Had Jeff stayed here, you know, yeah. we, we absolutely uh, had conversation about you know really trying to build out a staff that was again. As I look back at, at Jeff's time with us, you know, I, Jeff was a is a brilliant offensive football coach. That he period, and he and he's a, he just is, and and he also understands the other side of the ball really effectively. And as I you know. Two months before the end of the season, or maybe a month and a half before, you know, he and I had a, a you know, a fairly substantive conversation about. It. I mean, hey, when this season's over, you know, I, I want us to sit down and really organizationally figure out what we need to do to bring the rest of our operation up to the level that you operate at. I mean, you're, you know, you're you're up here in terms of a play caller and a and a, and a strategist from a football perspective, but do we have an organization that is functioning at that same level? You know, if you're at if you're at a a nine, maybe everything else feels more like it's at a six. Or how do we get everything else up to a, you know, to a seven, eight, nine to, to yeah. match your ability? So that was part of our thinking, you know, had Jeff stayed or not. But clearly, as we turn the page, we wanted to give whoever our new head was going to be, you know, the resources and, and the ability to go out and attract 
people that can can really build out a first class organization. And we're you know Ryan has has done that on the coaching side. We're doing it on the support staff side. And so I think uh, I think it's playing out the way that it needs to for us to have a chance to be successful going forward. You know, the part of that also is building an environment uh, and uh, there's work going right outside your window, literally. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, you're, it's going on. Very ambitious to, uh, you know, the, obviously the, the the tunnel, the south end zone, all yeah. this parts of this of this project for Ross Aid Stadium, not to mention Cherry Lane in a in a, in a premier golf uh, uh, facility as well, clubhouse. But talk a little bit about that and that importance, and how in the heck I still don't know how you're going to get it done before before September the second or whatever date it is uh, that you open up next year. Yeah, I, th- I think it is. It's exciting to me to see the work that's go that's going on. They're they're hard at it. Uh, you know, our our general contractor AECOM Hunt are they're they're you know pros in this area. They've done this all around the country, honestly, around the world uh, at lots of different facilities. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're relying clearly on their professional expertise and ability and their their representation that they they can bring back they can bring home the football specific pieces of this in time for next next season and that that being the south end zone and the tunnel construction and and you know i, I see lots i see lots of things going on already uh, yeah. that, that give me confidence that that can happen the dining facility on the north plaza that's not scheduled to be done until january of 24 yeah. i think it's just supply chain lead time issues with kitchen equipment and other things that are just going to push that back a little bit but that's not critical to pulling off the football season that's a you know that's an important part of our future but it's not something that's game day critical and so uh you know focusing the attention on making sure those game day related pieces are in place is the way hunts approach this and uh i think that's the that's the only way you get a chance to get it done on such an aggressive timeline yeah and uh, uh it is going to make a, a difference in a lot of different ways that tunnel is just intriguing not only from a safety standpoint but i think also from an atmosphere standpoint it's going to be really fun Yep, I agree. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see. I mean, I'm you know, <laughs> when, when you start digging under underneath a roadway and all that, yeah. you know, and, and all the engineers have said, hey, there's nothing down. We're not going to run into anything. There's no this, that, or I, I'll believe that when I see it. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Yeah. Yeah, you've been, you've been around the block on these <laughs> projects, and they never go yeah. exactly no. as you plan. No, All right, it, 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 we're down to a couple minutes here, yeah. and and it's silly to almost ask this question, but the wonderful world of transfer portal and NIL. Just talk a little bit about this, with NIL, just where not only Boulder Maker Alliance is, but where you feel that uh, the department is, and and or and your entire program is in this uh, ever changing, uh, move the goalpost type environment. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I like where we are. I would tell you that I think there's a clear recognition that we need to continue to grow and make progress in that area to support the efforts, particularly in, on the football side uh, of what Ryan and his staff feel is, is necessary and important for us to not not be the leaders in this in this world, but to be competitive and to make sure that we don't lose out on players that otherwise have every reason to be here at Purdue, that we just don't flat uh, not present them with a a competitive uh, or at least a reasonably competitive set of circumstances uh, that, that, that would cause them to, to, uh, to, to have a thought other than being at a place that makes great sense for them. So, so we're working closely with, with the Alliance uh, folks and, you know, to the extent that we, you know, we're not, we can't do it. You know, they, they've got to do this independently of us. And so we've worked hard to maintain, you know, a sort of an arm's length, but, but a clear uh, avenues of communication that make sure that we, we all understand sort of where we're going. Um, I think it's, Without a doubt, uh, been apparent early on that Ryan and his and, and his philosophy is going to be more uh, more aggressive, more using NIL and, and wanting NIL to be a factor uh, in our recruiting as we move forward than maybe we were previously. But maybe some more so just because that environment has evolved to a point uh, where that it has become you know a reality. So we're we are working really hard to make sure that we're positioned to, to execute on that in ways that matter. The transfer piece, you know, the the first wave of transfers, the calendar was not our friend uh, with with all that, particularly with the start of school and all. I think you'll see more activity as we move through the, uh, you know, the next window at the end of the semester. There'll there'll probably be some more activity 
uh, you know, coming out of spring ball and wrapping up the semester. So I, but, but I know that there's a tremendous amount of evaluation and, uh, and sort of roster uh, study going on by Ryan and his staff right now. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, it, it allows you to sleep so well at night because it's all been determined. <laughs> Will this, <laughs> I guess, in, from an NIL world, do you yeah. see, and you've seen change and in, in maybe not as much as you've seen the last two years in college athletics over the year. Do you see a settling down of this in, in a period, you know, in a two to three year period where this will come to a place where we we college athletics can manage this in, in a reasonable spot? Uh, you know what? I remain maybe I'm hopelessly idealistic when it comes to that. But I, but I yes, I do. And I certainly hope that that's the case. I I, I would tell you, Alan, I've said this repeatedly, and, I, and there's lots of my colleagues that would say the same thing. Lots of what gets you know, reported yeah. social media and otherwise is is pure nonsense. I mean, it is. Uh, in fact, we've had a couple of circumstances where, where I know Ryan has told players that 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 purport to have been you know approached with these outlandish offers. Well, get that in writing. Make sure make sure that that's something that's got some some substance and some teeth to it because you can say anything. Yeah, you know, people can make these. Hey, if you come here, you'll get X, and then all of a sudden, ah, well, you know, it's not going to be X. It's going to be X minus. Uh, something uh, or, or maybe X minus X, it could be nothing. And so I think there's, there's just sort of a, uh, you know, a, a disinformation world that that is, has existed. And, uh, and that to me will be part of us ultimately moving towards a more normalized situation when people realize that all these breathless accounts of these miraculous dollars that are being spread all over the place really aren't so. Um, but, but again, for us, we want to do, what we can do here at Purdue, be as competitive as we can be in a substantive and real way. We are we never want to be the school that promises and doesn't deliver. And that's that's that is a, a starting point for us. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, Matt Painter's that way. Ryan Walters is that way. Jeff Brown was the same way. We don't ever want to be somebody that says, you know, that that can't write or you know, purports to write a check that we can't cash. And so that's uh, that that's sort of the the Purdue approach to it. All right, we could do a whole show on this, but last question: You have worked in the fundraising world in your professional life. Uh, you're still working in it uh, in terms of raising money uh, for 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 college athletics. That balance between NIL and that a do you think Purdue is a you know Purdue's had a lot of support over the years? Certainly, how does it sit in the marketplace with that? But also, how do you reconcile that to where you got a donor that wants to give to? NIL, but also you need support for facilities down the road. Uh, and you got 30 seconds to answer this question. No, you got as much time as you need. Go sure. ahead. I, I think we just have to be completely transparent with what our priorities are. Um, you know, for all time and, and going forward, there will always be new and emerging priorities that, that we'll have here in athletics um, or across the university. And, you know, new things will come up as things that are, are important at this moment in time. Well, that's what NIL is right now. It, it is an it is an emerging priority and an emergent priority. It's it's here. Uh, yeah. So it is now, you know, amongst the things that we would encourage people that want to support our athletic program to consider. Uh, you know, the our, our existing priorities haven't gone anywhere. We still want to fund scholarships. We need to fund annual operations. We we need to do capital projects that that matter and, and have an impact on our program. But we also need to be competitive in the NIL space. So, you know, there will be folks that that will that will resonate with them and they'll want to maybe not do other things, but but to really do that because it's direct support to student athletes. And that 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 means something to some people. Others will not like that and will want to continue to do scholarship and or capital projects and or uh, JPC annual memberships. And that's uh, those are all legitimate personal decisions that people get to make. But we want to present the name image like this as an opportunity that at this moment in time matters to us and has an impact on the trajectory of our program going forward. Uh, so we're not going to ignore it nor nor look at it as a threat to what we're doing. It's just, it's an addition to what we're already doing. All right. Well said. And uh, I appreciate your candor on a, on a challenging uh, sure. subject, to say the least. All right, Mike. Uh, our next guest is somebody you know well as well. Mike DeCourcy uh, will join oh, yes. us for segment three, okay. but uh, uh, he told me some great stories about when uh, your days in Xavier and your, your relationship <laughs> over the years. But we appreciate you, Mike Babinski, for your time and your insight into this. And we will be back in a couple minutes. Uh, as I said, Mike DeCourcy will join us to talk a little. Yeah, we're going to talk a little Purdue basketball as well. So thanks to State Farm agent Trent Johnson and Triple X and to Mike Babinski. Hey, Mike, have a great rest of your day. 
Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.